Today, we're gonna to talk about how you can open up your site to new countries using just the click of a button. Now, of course, we're talking about Webflow localization. Now, Webflow recently came out with this where previously it would only be accessible using plugins, but you can use the click of a button to transform your site into so many different languages. So let's get into it. Now, I recently created an agency and this is the site for that. So we're gonna use this as an example on how you can actually use localization to create content in different languages. The first thing that you need to do is go into settings, localization and set your primary locale. Now, this just means what is your core main language going to be? In my case, it's going to be English. Secondary, it's gonna be your secondary domain. So I'm gonna add new locale here and I'm gonna look for whatever I want. So in this case, we can go Spanish, but we can go even Catalan if I wanted to, any language that I really speak. Now, one thing to say is that we could do this for any language that we wanted to. Like for example, Albanian. I'm gonna go ahead and save that. No, I won't because if I saved this, then I would have all my content in a new language, which is great, but I wouldn't be able to read and edit it. More on that later. So for now, we're just gonna go with Spanish, something simple that I can actually read and understand. We're gonna click save and save again. Now what we're gonna notice is that the English tab here has appeared. We have English and also Spanish. So once you're in the Spanish world, the first thing that you're gonna see is that the styles are disabled for everybody, except for if you are in the enterprise plan. We can talk about that later on in the video and in the comments if you guys wanna debate what your thoughts are on that. But the first thing that we're gonna go and do to actually translate this is go into the page wrapper. Now I'm using the client first system because this was built using Tilebit. So everything is built using the client first system. But with that being said, we can right click it and translate to Spanish. Now it's gonna use the power of AI to translate your entire page, including the symbols into Spanish. Now you will notice if you do speak Spanish that there are a couple of issues with the content here, but most of it looks pretty, pretty good. If you wanna double check with the English version, which click that, transform it one brand at a time, and then in Spanish. Okay, so it does make sense in this case, but if we wanted to, we could also right click and then reset all localization, translate to Spanish again, and so we can just go back and forth and see what the content says. Now we will notice that of course there are a couple of text issues, like for example, the content here in our testimonials aren't transformed to Spanish, and that is because it is inside of a CMS collection. And we can talk about how we can actually do that in just a little bit, but you'll also notice that all of the CMS collections in here, so our service pages are actually still in English. Another thing to notice is even though this is in in Spanish now. All of the collections that we have, for example, for the blogs, for our other static pages, aren't necessarily translated into Spanish. So we still need to do that. But first, let's go ahead and transform this text into something a little bit more digestible for Spanish speakers. So instead of your new something, something, something for Webflow, something, something, it doesn't really make sense in Spanish. What we're gonna do instead is gonna say something simple like the team helping you with Webflow or something like that. So now we have something a little bit more basic that we can attack this Spanish speaking world. Let's talk about why you would even want to do this. But before we talk about that, actually, let's go through the CMS and see how we can actually transform these CMS pages, which if I go ahead and click here into, for example, Webflow animations, we'll see that the content is still in English, even though we are in the Spanish world. So how can we do this and why do we want to do this? Number one, let's go into the how can we do this? So you saw that in the homepage, none of the CMS collections were actually translated, including the actual works, stuff like that. So let's go here into developments and then go Webflow CMS development or Webflow animation. And then we can see that we have this icon here that appears next to the fields, or we can click translate all the fields. I'm just gonna do that because it is way easier and I don't need to go one by one by one by one. So we'll see that it did a decent enough job. And now it's good enough for me to save, to preview on the site, and then I can translate a little bit more if need be. So I'm gonna go to developments and then we can go into this new one here, which is Spanish. Now it's pretty weird to see that this one is in Spanish and then these are in English, but if we wanted to, we just go one by one, adding in all the content and that would take maybe an afternoon to make sure that everything is good to go. But we'll see that this, because this is not part of the CMS, it's not in Spanish. So the page itself isn't in Spanish, just the CMS content. So to do that, we need to go here, translate to Spanish and it'll transform all the non CMS content into Spanish now. So now we can see that this says, Leer instead of read and all those other fun things. But we'll see that we still have all these issues here with the CMS page, but at least the content that is not part of the CMS is now good to go, except for this. So this is actually something interesting to pay attention to because if we are creating these pages 
to be super scalable and we can just launch them really quickly, it might make sense to pay attention to how it's being built in the English version so that we can actually transform this inside of the Spanish version. Now we can see that the text was obviously wrapping in the Spanish version because the words are longer. So if I wanted to go ahead and make this a no wrap, we can do, uh, we can leave it like that. See how that looks in Spanish. And now we can see that that looks a little bit more decent. Now, how is that gonna look on mobile? Not really my problem right now, just kidding. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at what else we can do here with localization. So inside of localization, we can also transform the images. Now, in this case, I wanna transform the alt tag of this specific image. Now we can see that the alt tag, if we go into the images panel here, scroll down, click on the little wheel, we can see that we have the alt tag of professional partner badge on a gradient background. Now I'm gonna go into the Spanish version and we can see that we get this symbol here. Now we can transform all the alt tags. So now in this case, we have the alt tag in Spanish, which is fantastic because if if we're trying to rank for all these different pages in English, we have to set the alt tags as well. So we can see a little bit about where this is going, but let's talk about the true power of the localization or just translating your site in general, because I think that's the key, most important part of this video. Number one is gonna be, of course, the different service pages. You get to contact a whole new group of people in Spanish. So if someone's looking up Webflow developer from Spain, or if they're in Spain looking that up in Spanish, it'll be difficult to come up for them if my entire site is in English, right? So it makes sense that all these different service pages like for example, 3D web design, someone in Spain does not know what web design or 3D might mean. But if I say páginas web en 3D, then it might make more sense for them, right? So not only does it make sense from a local standpoint to be looking these things up, but in terms of just SEO in general, if I create all these different landing pages in English, so say for example, we have 50 different pages. If it takes me an afternoon to translate all these sites and we might need to take a little longer to fix some of the issues that the AI created, but if I can translate everything into a new language, we now have 50 pages in English, 50 pages in Spanish, and then we can become the top, top dogs of that world in that little country or in that little geography. Now, in the beginning, we tried to create this site in Albanian and I almost did it and that would have been a very painful mistake because I don't know Albanian. But one thing to understand with that lesson is that while you can create all these different locales to Spanish, to Catalan, to Albanian, to French, Russian, whatever you want, if you do not speak that language, you will see that there are some issues with the content. So while you can just go ahead and create all these maybe thousands of different landing pages and really take over that, that market, it might not be the best idea because you're not actually getting to the person that you want to talk to. You're not actually connecting with that person with the text, with the content. So it might not make the most sense after all. But again, if you're creating content in Spanish or Catalan and you speak those languages, then all steam ahead, go, go, go. But yeah, you can see that everything here, even the footer, all these different symbols are created using this tile bit system. And also it's all translated, which is amazing. One tiny caveat to remember is that if you are translating, for example, the CMS for the works, if I go ahead and translate this name from English to Spanish, it's going to actually change the name of the company. That is not something that you should be doing. If the company is called one thing, it's best that it stays with that name, right? You don't wanna be creating random names for these companies. Also, another thing to keep in mind is testimonials. It might make sense to change the language so that the people reading it can actually read it, but then you are changing what this person is saying. So that might be a little bit of a gray line there. But other than that, maybe testimonials and the name, that could be explored personally, if you guys want to do that. One thing that I do want to say is that if we were to translate this entire site into Spanish, there would be a slight issue with content because although we created different images, maybe different alt tags, we can translate all of this into Spanish. If we have any media here, like for example, this is a video that I recently created and we're attaching these videos to the landing page. If the entire page is in Spanish, but then the video itself is in English, or if we have an original page in French translated to English, then the videos in French, you know, might hurt the site rather than help it. If you're getting someone there, they see that the thing doesn't work and then they leave immediately. It might lead to a, to a worse retention, honestly. So that's something to think about if you're gonna be doing this. So other than that, if you don't have videos or a ton of different content like like I might have on this agency site, then yeah, it might be it might be worth doing it for all of your pages, all of your, your CMS without even like worrying about it, you know? But anyways, let me know what you guys think about localization in the comments down below. Let's talk about some of the pricing plans that I know that there was a lot of debate about that online. Let's talk about all the different styling efforts that they're not letting us do, the enterprise stuff. Let's talk about all that juicy stuff in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.